for this first demo, uh, to the left you see the block diagram of the configuration using source 3 and source 1 as the drive signals, and source 2 will be used as the LO signal. To the right, I'm showing you the picture of the actual converter I've constructed. It uses a hybrid, 90 degree hybrid, to drive the IQ mixer. That allows it to be a single sideband mixer, and we'll look at the image rejection as well as the two-tone intermodulation distortion. For the first measurement today, we're going to do a two-tone IMD measurement on a frequency converter, and we're going to get all the signals from the PNA. I'm going to use port 1 and the source 3, that's the extra XSB source out the rear of the PNA, uh, coupled in through this path configuration. I've got uh, the extra source connected in through J10, and I will use the combiner path to uh, put both signals onto port 1. Then I'm going to use the second source port which comes out of port 3 as the local oscillator. So we can set those up here, or it's even convenient to set them up under the Sources tab here. So I'll set port 1 to 4.99 gigahertz. I've already set here the Source 3 to 5.01 gigahertz, and I've set the port 3 source to 23 gigahertz. Now I do want to adjust the powers, and so we can go to the Source, and we can turn on port 1, and we can turn on the Source 3, which comes out the rear panel, and we see the two tones there. Let's zoom in on that. Here I've uh, jumped into a center frequency of 5 gigahertz. My span is 1 gigahertz, and if we look at the R1 signal, we see the two tones are present there, and we can put a couple of markers on them, marker 1. Turn on marker 2 and search the next peak. I've already equalized the source powers, and I've done that using the offset and limits menu. In the offsets and limits, I can enter an offset for the two sources. I've got an extra loss in the rear panel, and then I can set the source powers here at the port power, and we'll go back into the source and set the proper source powers to get the two-tone powers that I want. Let's change the measurement to the B receiver, and let's put the stop frequency at a 30 gigahertz. You can see I've got an output signal here because I've already turned on the power on port 3. I've set that power to 8 dB. If I turn off port 3, that's the local oscillator power. Of course, nothing comes out, but I do get some leakage of the uh, RF input out the mixer. So I'm going to turn this port power on, and if you recollect, we had the frequency converter that we're using, or the mixer that we're using, has a 90-degree uh, hybrid, and that gives me image rejection. So you can see I'm getting about 20 dB image rejection from this signal, which is the uh, low side signal. My local oscillator is here, and let's zoom up to 28 gigahertz. Here I've set the center frequency to 20 gigahertz. Let's zoom in the span to something like 200 megahertz, and we can see our two-tone IMD signals. Now I've turned on the four markers associated with uh, the two tones and the IMD tones. I'm actually overdriving this uh, converter. Remember it has the input hybrid and then the frequency converter, so that has about 20 dB of loss, but the input uh, followed by an amplifier, which has about uh, 25 dB of gain and zero dBm output power. So my power levels are a little bit high for driving this IMD. We can drop this power level in the power menu. Port one power will drop down under the source menu. I can either set port one port 3, oh, minus 20 dBm. And now we can see the IMD products have dropped a lot. I'm no longer in strong compression. So the third and the fifth order. We can look farther down on these products by narrowing the IF bandwidth. Let's go to 3 kilohertz. And we can see now the lower level products or higher order products at quite a lower level. I want to set more traces on the screen, and we can set the readouts of traces on the screen to up to 16 uh, marker readouts. So I've increased it from the default of 5 to 10 readouts, and that'll let me add more markers and see them on screen at the same time. I'm going to add marker 5 at the same place as marker 3, and I'm going to add marker 6 at the same place as marker 4. I'd like to see the DBC level, so I activate marker 1 and turn on the reference marker. It shows up at marker 1. And marker 5, we can now change to a delta marker. And marker 6, we can change to a delta marker. 
and now we see the uh, uh, plus and minus dBc levels. So we see minus 25 dBc uh, level for a power level of minus 12 and an IMD power of minus 37 dBm. We'll turn off some of those other markers and, and finally to finish this demo we'll go take a look at a broad sweep. We'll start at 1 gigahertz and we'll stop at 50 gigahertz and again here we see all of the signal products coming out and we can put markers on them as well. For example, at 23 gigahertz, we should be seeing our LO feed through. So this demonstrates that we can do two-tone measurements with the PNA using only the internal sources. And for this, we use the port one source and the source three source as the two tones and the port three coming out to the LO to uh, allow us to make our 28 gigahertz two-tone IMD measurement of this frequency up converter.